ونستعينهم <تصفيق> وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي دروش يبرل respected brothers respected elders mothers and sisters listening at home all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after a respite of a few weeks due to the blessed month of Ramadan Bifazlillah we reconvene and continue with the seerah of the blessed souls Khulafair Rashidin Alhamdulillah we have completed the seerah of Siddiqui Akbar Hazrat Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala an Hazrat Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala an and we have just started the seerah of Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala an we are actually covering just as a reminder the first phase of the life of Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala an and inshallah we want to cover that in many different chapters but when I say the first phase of the life of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an I personally have divided it into different sections the first phase would mean the period of time which Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an had spent with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so we will cover that period first his companionship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then we'll go with the second chapter which is with Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq then Hazrat Umar then Hazrat Uthman and then the Khilafat of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an bifazlillah just to quickly recap we've covered the birth of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an we've covered uh, the youthful period th- that age of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, when he came under the wing of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have covered also the nikah of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, and the children of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, and especially some of the military expeditions in which Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an himself has been a hero for the Muslims in Islam subhanallah and so we've covered all that inshallah and uh, I believe that just before Ramadan we had completed the chapters of the treaty of Hudaybiyah and so inshallah we will continue uh, from the time after the treaty of Hudaybiyah the treaty of Hudaybiyah did not even last for two years and remember majority of the companions had taken the treaty of Hudaybiyah to be in favor of the Quraysh of Makkah but in reality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had informed Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the treaty of Hudaybiyah is actually Fatham Mubina a clear victory for the Muslims and this treaty did not even last for two years there was a truce between the Mushrikeen 
and the Muslims a ceasefire basically for approximately 10 years but there was an open violation that came from one particular tribe which was an ally of the Quraysh and the name of that tribe is Banu Bakr Banu Bakr the tribe of Banu Bakr was connected to the Quraysh people and these were people who ferociously attacked another tribe which was the tribe of Banu Khuza'a Banu Khuza'a now this tribe although they were not Muslims but were allies of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Muslims in Medina and so the Banu Bakr tribe had no right to attack the Banu Khuza'a because they were the allies of the Muslims in Medina to Munawwara complete protection was given to them by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the Quraishi people actually what they did is that they attacked the people of Banu Khuza'a killed all of the men folks so much so that some of the people actually entered the haram the sanctuary hoping that they'll be saved who will want to fight in front of the Kaaba even the Kuffar would respect the Kaaba but they paid no heed to that and they also massacred and killed everyone that was there not only killed them but they looted even the properties of the Banu Khuza'a when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam found out about this this uh, atrocity committed by Banu Bakr Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was extremely angry immediately Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to take action and he sent someone to the Quraysh and he said to them I am giving you one option and only one option and that is that you have to pay blood money for all the people that have been killed by the Banu Bakr so you have to pay blood money and blood money uh, is quite a high price to pay otherwise we will take the treaty of Hudaybiyah to be abrogated and annulled completely the Quraysh were people of arrogance and the Banu Bakr were even more arrogant than the Quraysh and they sent a message to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we will not pay you a dirham we will not pay you a dirham and we the Quraysh are dissolving the treaty of Hudaybiyah that we've got nothing to do with this treaty now subhanallah and so when this news reached the ears of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of course Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was disappointed cold blooded murder that had taken place with the people the men folks of Banu Khuza'a but in a way subhanallah Allah granted them shahadat and they were martyrs many of them of that tribe had also embraced Islam it was not that these were people who were all non-Muslims but from amongst the Banu Khuza'a there were certain people who were also leaders in fact who even participated in some of the jihad so a lot of them were also Muslimin so those who were the Muslimin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted them shahadat and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said to the companions that alhamdulillah this is fath Mubin, uh, the, the violation that comes from the Banu Bakr and the treaty that has been dissolved now will actually pave the path of fath Makkah conquering the city of Makkah al Mukarramah. Subhanallah al Now Abu Sufyan was a very intelligent man. He was the leader of the Quraysh at that time. Remember Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, all these guys have been killed already. And so it was this man, Abu Sufyan, who had the full control of the city of Makkah. Very intelligent. He knew that these were the foolish people who had sent the message to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and out of anger they said that we will not respect the treaty what he did is that he himself alone he went to Medina Munawwara to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without any arms, bodyguards all alone he went to Medina Munawwara hoping and thinking that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is rahmatul lil alameen maybe he can broker something and that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will renew the treaty of Hudaybiyah and so he went to Medina Munawwara 
and he met with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of course when they were not prepared to pay the blood money Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in no mood to talk with them and to agree to their terms so what Abu Sufyan did is that he asked Umm Habiba the daughter of Abu Sufyan and the wife of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we've covered that in Ramadan that she should intercede uh, on behalf of Abu Sufyan for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maybe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would listen to Umm Habiba again one very important mas'ala though Umm Habiba paid no attention to what Abu Sufyan had to say and the fact that she she knew that whatever Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to decide that would be the best decision but then as as men and the head of the family uh, at times a person would have to make critical decisions an important decision and so what we need to understand is that we should not be influenced in the wrong way by certain members of the family that even if it means that it may go against your family what we need to look at is haq, the truth and justice and so even if it means it is against you or it is against some of your family members that is fine because you are actually pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if the family members tell you something which is the truth and haq then mashallah you must accept that you must not say huh, tu chup <laughs> this is wrong you don't tell me nothing Subhanallah, you'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a lot of intelligence to the different categories of people. Sometimes a person can even learn from a child. We fail to understand that, but sometimes even a young child can teach you something. So, alhamdulillah, the doors of knowledge are open. The doors, doors of knowledge are open. And the real knowledge is actually what you receive from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is real knowledge and so she did not influence Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in important matters Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of course was completely connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Abu Sufyan noticed that Umm Habiba is paying no attention then he went to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq he said to Abu Bakr Siddiq that after all we are Quraysh you are a senior man I am a leader. There is this friendship. Abu Bakr Siddiq was, of course, during the Jahiliya period, Abu Sufyan was a rich man. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an was a rich man. Hazrat Usman was a rich man. So all of uh, the connections were there from before. So he says, for the sake of that friendship, Abu Bakr, come on, go and speak to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After all, what is wrong? A ten-year peace treaty, ceasefire, no problem, no fighting in... Uh, the Arabian Peninsula Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and did not agree then he went to Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala surprisingly he went to Hazrat Umar it's a good thing Umar radiallahu ta'ala and didn't take his sword out and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and also said no and then he went to Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and thinking that Ali is from the Ahl Bayt the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and none of the companions agreed to it and they said that the final say and the decision comes from only Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this man left the city of Medina disappointed uh, and subhanallah when he got back to Makkah al-Mukarramah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately was preparing a huge army mobilizing a massive army mashallah to march from Medina Munawwara to Makkah al-Mukarramah and he said to the companions that this is the barakat of the treaty of Hudaybiyah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said that this is fatham mubina and this is a clear victory for the muslimin and what had happened that because of the treaty being completely annulled all of the Arab tribes uh, the Bedouins and all of the tribes that were living outside Medina Munawwara all came and had become allies of the muslimin and in fact many of them had also become muslims and immediately 10,000 Mujahideen were prepared to march with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Instantly, 10,000 people were ready. 
and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah when you look at the akhlaq and the character of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he left Madinatul Munawwara it was his sunnah that he would never enter any locality uh, unexpectedly he would always give the people time and information that we are coming to your locality even if it meant that the people living there were the enemies of the Muslimin, it was never a surprise visit never and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped uh, on, uh, to a location which is called Zahran a location which is called basically Zahran is a desert and not very far from the city of Makkah al and so the Muslims had encamped in that part of the zone and it was night time when the fire was lit 10,000 Mujahideen were there mashallah it seemed as if there was fire in the entire desert of Zahran that the desert was burning now a lot of the people who were living in Makkah Mukarramah they could see a lot of fire being burnt in the zone of Zahran and so a group of them went to see what was happening and rumors had spread that there is fire in the desert so people said how can there be fire in the desert and so people went and groups were going to see and they saw mashallah the Muslim army 10,000 of them and it was night and there was fire burning this scene had actually instilled fear in their hearts and they were not in the mood to pick up arms and to fight the Muslims and subhanallah it was a very easy entry for the Muslimin to enter the city of Makkah al talking about Abu Sufyan what an intelligent man he was Abu Sufyan looking at uh, the situation and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had opened his heart even before Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the city of Makkah he himself went to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the private tent of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the companion said that the leader of the Quraysh Abu Sufyan is here and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said tell Abu Sufyan to come Abu Sufyan came and in front of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Allahu akbar and he embraced Islam with sincerity with sincerity imagine the man all his life fought the muslimin all his life all the wealth of Abu Sufyan was against the Muslims but just before uh, the eve of Fath Makkah this man comes and he surrenders and he says I want to become a Muslim yeah. Abu Sufyan remember is the father of Hazrat Amir Mu'awiyah Amir Mu'awiyah it is farz upon every Muslim to have deep love for Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala remember extremely important you'll find that a lot of people don't show that love to Hazrat Amir Mu'awiyah which is wrong he is a Sahabi just because the son of Amir Mu'awiyah was Yazid just because his son was Yazid that does not mean that, 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 that there is something wrong with Hazrat Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala is someone who was very close to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the brother-in-law and so, mashallah, Umm Habiba is the sister. So all of them were related and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a lot of dua for Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala an. Qad, this man came and he embraced Islam, Abu Sufyan. Ulama have mentioned, and I have also mentioned this uh, in the month of Ramadan, how and why Abu Sufyan was given hidayat. Subhanallah. It is said that Abu Jahl had slapped Hazrat Fatima. Did you recall that? Abu Jahl slapped Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she went to Abu Sufyan. And said, Abu Sufyan, a noble man like you is still alive. And yet the young daughters in the city of Makkah have no safety. So he said, what do you mean? And he said, don't you know? Abu Jahl has slapped me without a reason. And Abu Sufyan got so angry. They have slapped you. You are from the family of Abdul Muttalib. And he stood up. And he was holding the hands of Bibi Fatima. She was young at that time. And said, come with me. And 
he took Bibi Fatima to Abu Jahl and said to Abu Jahl, you slapped Fatima? And he said, yes. So he said to Bibi Fatima, I want you to slap him like how he slapped you. I want you to slap him like how he... And Bibi Fatima, subhanAllah, one tight slap on the face. One tight slap on the face. She came back and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed of this. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what Abu Sufyan did was good. What Abu Sufyan did was good. And the good should be repaid with good. The ihsan of Abu Sufyan is on me. That he gave the right to my daughter. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lifted up his hand and said, Ya Allah, put iman in the heart of Abu Sufyan. And that is why he did not die in the battle of Badr, in the battle of Uhud, the many other battles that were there. And you had, subhanallah, other individuals who also came to Mecca. And there was a fight between the people of Mecca and Medina, the Qurayshi and the Muslimin that had stayed in Medina to Munawwara, so many people were assassinated, ambushed, but everything with Abu Sufyan, he was protected, nothing happened to him. Why Allah had destined for him Iman, and this was the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he becomes a Muslim. Even before Muslims enter Makkah, the leader of the Quraysh has already embraced Islam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enters Makkah from the main gate. And then the different contingents of the Muslimin enter from the different gates of the Haram. And the meeting place was the Haram, the location where the sanctuary, the Kaaba is, where the Mataf is, that is where all of them would meet. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered all the mushrikeen that were there, Muslims and non-Muslims. And how humble was Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, completely kneeling down as if someone is in ruku, Allahu Akbar, in this manner. And praising Allah And he said This victory only comes from Allah This victory only comes from Allah Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina And the first action of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Look at the bravery and the courage of Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam My respected brothers A Nabi will target the root disease of kufr that is the difference between a Nabi and the common man. The common man will think of diplomacy, this, that, this, that, this, that. A Nabi only fears Allah. And the Nabi will target the root cause of that disease, which is spreading kufr around the world. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the city of Makkah. The first thing, he had a stick in his hands. And he said... Open the doors of the Kaaba. And he said, gather all the mushrikeen. All the mushrikeen should be there. All the kuffar were there. More than 300 idols were in the Kaaba. Stored in the Kaaba. And the mu'jiza of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would just point at the idol, and the idol would fall in front of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it would fall on the ground face first and it would be smashed into pieces. Smashed into pieces. Every idol. Allah's Nabi would do this, fall down, smash into pieces. Every idol, more than 300. And he wanted to show this to the mushrikeen that these are the gods that you worship, completely lifeless, spiritless. They don't listen, deaf, dumb, they don't speak. And these are your gods. And in a way, this had actually opened up the hearts of the mushrikeen. It is said that there was one idol which was known as Hubul. What was the name of it? Hubul. Kya naam hai? Hubul. Bulbul nahi. Hubul. Hubul was the god of war. What was he? The god of war. And this Hubul idol was put towards. Uh, the cavity of the wall right on the top where the ceiling is and even Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could not reach it and so remember we're talking about the seer of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and the contributions of Hazrat Ali let's look at that 
the banner of Islam was given to Hazrat Ali when, he, when, when the Muslim army entered the city of Makkah. That one of the banner was given to Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. So Hazrat Ali was also holding the janda, the banner. And then there was hubul that was hiding up. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, we're not going to miss this man, this idol. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ali, Ali come and climb on top of me. Get on top of me and I want you to bring that hubul down. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala answered, Ya Rasulullah, I can't do that. For me to ascend on you and to climb on you and to do this. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ali, I want you to do this. Ya Rasulullah, I can't do this. This is bad disrespect. And only when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam insisted, you have to do it. With great respect, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and got onto Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he pushed Hubul down from the top and Hubul came down, smashed into pieces. Smashed into many pieces. Hubul, the war of God also, was smashed. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alhamdulillah, now the Kaaba has been completely purified. The, 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 the Fatha, the, the conquering of the Muslimin for, on that day actually marks the complete annihilation of idolatry from the Arabian Peninsula. From that day, when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the city of Makkah, until today, alhamdulillah, the Arabian Peninsula is completely free from shirk. Shirk in that sense that somebody would worship an idol. So much so, Allahu alam, Allah knows best that. I have heard that there is not even uh, a church in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Is that true? It is. Would you know that? Allahu alam. That they say that it is not allowed. And there was some controversy for that. But khair, as far as idol worshipping is concerned, from the time of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until today, that entire zone is completely free. And I, as I said that, Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, what do they target? They target the, the root cause. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, what did he do? The root cause. He fought the people, he showed them. And he went directly to their gods. This is what Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam did. And this is what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has done. And when Isa alayhi salatu was salam will come, what will he do? وَيَكْسِرُ salib. What he will do is that he will break all the crosses. So the cross, the crucifix that you see on East Park Road, is it nothing to you all that you pass by and feel the sorrow of the sorrow or whatever. Allahu alam, Allahu alam, Allahu alam, Allahu akbar. Allah knows best. This is all shirk. And, and this is how they, they speak and they put their posters. And there's one also just uh, across where I live on Coleman Road. There's a church there. And this is what they do. Aliyazu billah. They put the, the statue of Isa alayhi salatu was salam. And this is a symbol of shirk. That is why in the beginning the ulama were of this opinion that you could not wear a tie. In the beginning. And also a lot of the youth when they put on the England t-shirts, uh, you will notice that there is also a cross there. There is also a cross. So you have to be very careful. Whatever you wear should not be something which is symbolic to any kind of their religion which is non-Islamic or anything that is attached to kufr. So you have to be careful. If there's any symbols of shirk, it would be haram. And so Isa alayhi salam, when he comes, وَيَكْسِرُ salib, The first thing he will do, will break all the crosses. Subhanallah al So Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, that is what they do. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they after, called a few of the companions and said, that around the city of Makkah, where the Bedouins are and in the tribal villages, there are also some temples and in the temples you had huge idols that were stored. And this duty was given to some of the companions to go and break the idols. Completely break the idols. Why now the complete control was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is said that Khalid bin Walid was given 
this mission to go to the tribe of Banu Jazima these were strong people and for strong men you need a strong Sahabi and for Banu Jazima Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was selected Hazrat Khalid bin Walid knew their attitude Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was a bit hot tempered of course he was also related to he comes from the family of uh, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, and uh, Amir Muawiyah and that clan and Khalid bin Walid when he came there was a man who wanted to stop Hazrat Khalid bin Walid and he could not even speak so Hazrat Khalid bin Walid got angry and killed him on the spot killed him on the spot and, and then there was a, a lot of problem a lot of issue uh, Khair, the Banu Jazima eventually had embraced Islam but what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did is that he Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Khalid bin Walid that perhaps this was not the right strategy this was not the right strategy but on behalf of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave blood money to the people of Banu Jazima and said that are you happy with this and they were happy with that and Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an had stayed with the people of Banu Jazima for a few months teaching them about Iman and Islam and teaching them how to perform Salah so this again was a great contribution that comes from Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala inshallah ta'ala if Allah wills we will continue with the seer of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an in the next session of Dars Hadith wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin allahumma taqabbal minna wa tub alayna innaka antat tawwabur rahim nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk sami'na wa ta'ana ghufranaka rabbana wa ilayk al-maseer bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin